Yeah. Hello, you know what? I'd like you to just stop what you're doing for a few minutes and just listen to what I'd just like to say to you as black people. And really, this is about land, something that you own, that you're unaware of, and the value of this land and where it's coming from and what the situation is now. Now, first of all, let me give you a little background history on how we got to. We're talking about a place called the Bridge Park. Right. My name's Leonard Johnson and I was the actual chairman of Bridge Park. I was the founder of a group called the Halsden People's Community Council, HPCC. In 1981, we stopped the riots when everybody else rioted. We actually set up classes, we was running a little car park and we converted this place into classrooms. We had various things going on in this place. And when I talk about Bible studies, drama classes, dance classes, financial advice, and running a can catering operation, a bar, setting up an adults group, and various things like that. We also got involved with helping the council, which was, we ran their summer program. We actually helped them to run festivals. We was at the Brent Carnival, and we did our own thing. But then, you know, we went on to move into this place that was run just by white people. It was called the Hilltop Club. We did up that. And we got dance classes further again. We ran a church there. We ran a Sunday school. We ran all forms of social activities, talent competitions. And we started moving on because we also set up sports like basketball, netball, volleyball. And all these things were going and it was it was flourishing and making our community thrive. I was told that there was this place called the bus garage up for sale. And I was told by this man called Arthur Thompson that, look, you want to have a look at it? I came down and I said, you know, we could actually have workshops. We could have business units. We could have like our electronics place down here. We could have a sports center. We could have theater. We could make our own movies. We could do various things that could enable our community to thrive. Because I'd always said that the black community was just looked on as criminals, drug abusers, alcoholics. At that time, we was getting into mental institutions, not only filling up the prisons, but filling up the graveyards. And to me, this was not the way we were to go. We had to go somewhere else now. I must say that after Prince Charles, because I worked with Miss Thatcher, I worked with Prince Charles, I worked with D the DOE, and all these people said the idea was brilliant. What we wanted to do is buy it and convert it, because we made it clear that we wanted a slice of the British cake, because our parents, they came over here after Windrush and everything, and everybody got something except the black. All we got is these little centers that they take away, underfund, under-resourced, until they close down. We said, no, we don't want that. We want something that belonged to us. So it belonged to you. And let's make that clear. These people are trying to steal Bridge Park. And when I say steal, what we did is we raised the money. I got London Transport. I got the, not only London Transport, the GLC, the DOE, Brent Council got all of them to agree they would buy this place for us. And because I never trusted them, I put a covenant in place and I said, now the GLC and all the funders, I said, listen, I don't trust Brent Council like I don't trust no other institution because just like the Scarman report said, institutional racism. Just like the Stephen Lawrence report said, police, institutional racism. With the council, it was not only the council was institutional racist, it was also the officers, it was a system that was an institutional racist system against black people. And that is why I'm pe appealing to you for hearing me now, at this present time. Because what we did is we got all of them together because they kept giving us the runaround and got all of them and said right London Transport you said if the council put their money in you're going to put your money in 
Break Council, you said, if they agree, you'll put your money in. And GLC, you said you're going to put their money in. And all of them had to say it. So therefore, they agreed to buy the place for us. Not for them, for us. So now, we owned this land, this empty bus garage shell. We raised the 1.8 million to purchase, and then we raised all the money to convert it with all our ideas. None from the council, just our ideas. Theatre, arts, business, technology centre, conference rooms, and it started thriving so much that we, even before it was open, I invited Prince Charles. Now, let me just give you a little history on that. When Prince Charles, before he came, not only the blacks were saying, ah, oh, you ain't going to get Prince Charles and laughing, but they kept laughing, thinking we would never get this place anyway. But the bottom line is, Prince Charles got my invitation. There was this man called Leslie Winters. Bob Blackman was the leader of the council. And Bob Blackman put this man on our board. And I said, Bob, how can you put this man on our board when this man has written to the newspapers and said, oh, they're just a load of black thieves or black crooks. And then you see him write a letter to say, oh, to the newspaper, Prince Charles shouldn't come, off, come over onto Bridge Park. They're just a bunch of black thieves. They're just a bunch of... And he just slandered us. Anyway, when the council saw the place thriving and making so much, I mean, this place is now like a ghost town. When we was running it, the bar was thriving, the theatre was thriving, everywhere was thriving, the canteen, the restaurant, the sports hall. We had people like Oliver Samuels, the Crystal Rose Show come out of it, Mobo Awards come out of it, Ray Farron, who's the actor, big, one of the big black actors in the UK. We had so much, Oliver Samuels, Dennis Brown, we had Curtis Mayfield down here. All these people appreciated and respected and could not also believe how we had achieved what we achieved. Because the chief executive of that time, Charles Woods, said to me, he didn't expect us to get this far. And the reason being is because when we first started, he gave us what I would call a rope around our neck and balls around our feet, chains. And when I say that, it's that they saddled us when we started. No community organisation get this before. They saddled us with a loan of £250,000. So before we even start, we're in debt. Just like what they do to black people, right? Then it's like when they saw we still was paying the loan and we were still doing, we were still making money and getting the thing going and we were start, starting to make a surplus, they started reducing the grant. That was the first atrocity that they started doing. Then, what they did, they decided that the only way they could really take this place was to discredit, right, and humiliate, right, and basically destroy the image of the leader, which was myself at the time, I was a chairman. So how they started doing that, let me tell you, they said, I stole a million pounds from Prince Charles. Can you steal a million pounds from Prince Charles and not go to prison? I write letter to Prince Charles. They thought it was a mockery, obviously. They weren't interested. This is a joke. Then, it's like they said, I've got a yacht. Around the corner from here, there's a place called St. Raffles Estate. A man was selling a boat for 400 pounds. And I begged the man, kept going to him, going to him, till he gave us the boat free of charge. When I got that boat free of charge, I said it, was to do up, the kids were to do it up on the MSC scheme and then they was able to go on the well sharp and do like school things with the boat because the kids would have developed it and painted it and everything. They said I had a yacht. So that little boat that I got for £400, it come in now, it's a yacht. They turned around and they just slandered, slandered, whatever they could do and then what they did is they... they they did employ a financial manager to us. This man steal £50,000 from us. But it go out that £50,000 gone missing from Bridge Park. Yet this man, he was a white financial manager that Brent Council 
employed and put on our board. When the man stole the £50,000, we took the man to court. None of that come out. The man got off. We were gutted because we said, how could that have happened? Not only that, the same Brent Council, they turned around and put a councillor called Nelka on our board in the ITEC. My friend Paul Anderson spent two years developing all what he did for us. And then, Council Nelka had the cheek after he saw that it was becoming like a little Silicon Valley. The kids were creating things, but they were black kids who were either excluded from school or had no abilities or no chance of an opportunity. Paul Anderson wanted those. They started creating. They started doing so much. And this Council Nelka took it, right, and brought this iTech that we raised the money for until it became the Middlesex iTech. It was so successful. And he took it and gave it to the Asians in Alberton. So the man's taken a thing from a deprived area like Stonebridge and given it to a flourishing Asian area in Alberton. Now, is that not racism? Is that not wicked? Is that not evil? Even the £50,000 that got stolen, we heard that Brent Council got back that money. They did not tell us. They kept it to themselves so that we were still slandered, right? We got bellways, right? This is the kind of things we were doing. Bellways, which is a big development company, we agreed with them that we could work with them to knock down Stonebridge, build better flats, bigger units, that the people have space and whatever, good um, living space, living quarters. When Brent Council Chief Executive found out they were giving, give our organisation, which was helping the community, like a 10-15%, what did they do? They laugh and get the details from us, as they always do, because we tell them everything all the time, this is what we do. What did they do? They got rid of bellways, brought in their own people, and made the flats like half the size that we were, we were going to do in, ter in terms of providing for our community. Let me tell you something, you know, when I say the covenant, if they get this place, it's our fault. Because black people are out there saying, I stole money, I stole money. I was, Look, no money got stolen, I never go to prison. Nobody ever, they, obviously they were monitoring my account, they were monitoring things about me, because they obviously needed to do that as far as their, their plan went. They found nothing. They knew who stole money. We are the only ones with nothing. The Chinese have Chinatown. The Asians have Ealing and Southall and Tower Hamlet. The, the Muslims have, they've got the Moss down Brentfield Road. They've got everything cornered. All we have is our little barber shops, our hair shops and whatever. And we still have to buy the things from the other people. We're not producing. Bridge Park was going to start allowing us to produce. What I need to make clear is that we, we, not me, we, have to come together and discover all the papers, all consultation, all of the things that they have done that is hidden and buried, the paperwork, in order for us to get our act together to challenge these criminals who's trying to steal Bridge Park. Bridge Park was built and developed for the people by a group of black people. I was 21 years old when this all started. And as far as I see, because of how we achieved and because they never expected us to have achieved so much, they had to slander me. They had to discredit me. As they do with all our leaders, they always take us down in order to do what they want to do. It's called fake news like Donald Trump says. It's called, you know, the wicked media. Because now we have our own social media access we need to come together and we need to say enough is enough. You know, not like Theresa May saying enough is enough. We're saying enough is enough. We want our piece of the cake. We got the money for this place. We designed this place. We built this place with the community and we ran this place with the community. And all they did is come to run it down in the ground. And what they're doing now is they're not only destroying it and not maintaining it, they're making the place deteriorate 
so they could sell it to an offshore company who's next door. They kept that building open for over 20 odd years, right? Because they had full intention of stealing this building, stealing this land from the black people. And if we allow them to do that, we have a lot to answer for to our youth, the ones behind us. We want to stop them going in prison. We want to stop them going into mental institutions. We want to stop them going into the graves. We want to stop them going to the alcoholic nominus. We want to stop all of the things, all of the atrocities that they have put on us that has made us back to slaves. They want to set us back 50 years. And we say you can't steal it from us because we, the people, the black people, we own this place. And when I say we own it, we never ask them to buy it for us, to us to use it. We ask them to buy it for us so we could have a lease which they never ever gave us. Never gave us a lease because their full intention was to steal it from us. And they never gave us the freehold which was all agreed and the covenant. These things have to be known. And the black people who's going out there and talking rubbish about us, taking money and all of that, you want to get a life. And you want to wake up to the reality and to stop spreading the rumours that the National Front or the Ku Klux Klan kind of people give you to spread against your own. You would never hear Ku Klux Klan chatting about their brothers or their fellow man because a black man tell them to. You wouldn't get National Front cursing and chatting down their National Front people because a National Front man tell them to do. Listen, wake up to reality. We own this place and we must take it back. Don't let them steal it by any means necessary. At least we do have land. In England we have land and this is our land to build. And if we want to knock it down and put up flats, if we want to do anything that the developer can do, we can do it better. And if the developer want to work with us and we want to give him a piece of the land for him to give us some money to buy that so that it help what we're doing, fine. If Brent Council want to give us our land back and make sure they give it, we'll go in peace. But if they don't, we're going to fight them all the way. Because this cannot keep happening in England. What has black people got? What have black people got in Brixton? What has black people got in Ladbroke Grove? All the areas, name them where black people are. What have they got? Nothing. Nothing. All they've done is destroy every move we make. And it's about time we see it and stop it right now. We own the land. You own the land, the land belongs to us. I'm just going to show you something. You see this place? When Prince Charles came in, this is what we were saying. We said, the people that walk in dark and darkness have seen a great light. Because when I was 21, we was in darkness on the street, doing the wrongs, doing whatever we was doing, right? And so to me, now it's walk as children of the light. And I'm saying that the youths now must start doing this, right? And Prince Charles opened it in 1988. And they never expected it to open. They never expected us to get this far. And that is what I'm trying to show you. This is hypocrisy, not democracy. These councillors, the Conservative and the Labour Party and all of them, Brent Council, they want to stop trying to tee far land. This belonged to us, the whole building. I'm just going to show you something now, yeah? Just for you to see a part of where it is. Look at its location, right? We are right on the edge of the North Circular Road, right? Right on the edge. You've got Unisys over there that they want to sell it to, right? All of these things, look at the building. It goes all the way from there by Unisys. And then when we walk down here, you see, you see the, the, the road leading right to the city and it come right back to Wembley. All of this, all of this we own. And let me show you something. When it say this stone is laid by Leonard Johnson and wake up people, wake up to what they do and how they do it. 28th of October, 85, Prince Charles opened it in 1988. We got black people to set up construction companies. We got them to set up businesses, we got the council to give, put them on their approve list because they weren't on the approve list, right? And now, I just want to show you, we're going to walk along here. All of this were units. We had all of this functioning. 
The car park was always packed. There was nowhere to park. Now it's empty space. You've got plenty of room. This is where we had our first little offices, where we were crammed in with porter cabins as well when we first started. Here, this used to be a crash. Now it's a missionary school. That, that's, that's okay. One sewer, because this is the kind of thing we wanted anyway. You know? This, they've got lots of people, lots of the kids come here, but I'm sorry to say, not as many as what we used to have coming here. We used to have all the parents from Stonebridge down here, Harlesden down here. This is now a church, right? This is the place where I said we had our iTech, tech, see up there, technology house. Still got that sign there, right? But what they didn't do is tell the truth what happened. They put somebody on the board and we had like the maintenance and electronics building downstairs, the programming and everything upstairs. And they were so successful, them kids. And what did they do? Took it away from black people. You tell me about that, if that is right. Is that right? I don't think so. God brought us together to bring this place together. And when we bring it together, because it was black people, they want to steal it, they want to teeth it, and want to call us teeth. They're the teeth. Because it's destruction of a black civilization. Destruction of a black vision. Destruction of a black dream that we created. And we cannot let them do, take that away from us. When we look here, they've really looked at how best they could destroy it. I mean, if you even look over there, what is that? What is that? Is this the way Brent Council keep their own facilities? Yet they've taken it? And let me show you something. This is what you want to learn, right? Yeah, you've got the Asian man. Know who, know and follow. Know and follow the right way. You see Mandela? I'm not saying that he did it absolutely right. But we had Marcos Garvey. We had Paul Bogle. We had Martin Luther. We had all these different people who have done something. And every time we do something, they want to destroy it. And you know what? It's because they don't want us to come up. It's our fight. We've got to stop them. Are we going to make them do it again?